Where was the Kanembonu Empire? Welcome to the Sankofa Pan African series. Please subscribe to the channel if you've not yet done so. And don't forget to turn on your uh, notification button. Thank you. Now, the next empire which emerged as a major one in West Africa after Songhai was Kanembonu. It is believed that this empire originated from somewhere between Lake Chad and the Bar El Ghazal in the region of Kanem in modern day Chad. Initially, it started out as two independent kingdoms, the states of Kanem and Bornu. These two kingdoms were made up primarily of agriculturists um, and uh, pastoralists and consisted of various ethnic uh, groups, most of whom were skilled in iron working techniques and horsemanship. Now, the two kingdoms then merged into one. It is believed that by the 11th century, their rulers were Islamized. According to Lange, Humayi, the founder of the Seifawa dynasty, who ruled between 1075 and uh, 1080, was able to become ruler of Kanem with the help of a pro-Islam faction in the Kanem court. Now, the rulers of uh, Kanem were therefore among the earliest to be Islamized in sub-Saharan Africa. Kanem Bonun quickly developed an overwhelmingly Islamic culture. And according to Bakindo, the ruling classes undertook the Hajj and were committed to building mosques in the country. Now, Islam was the keystone of the political uh, life of Kanem Borno, and um, this was marked by the change of dynasty between the Dugawa, who were ousted by the Seifawa in the um, 11th century when Humayi came to power. The expansionist policy of the kingdom was also fueled by Islam and the conquest of other kingdoms was justified by the claim that because they were non-Muslims, they were infidels and they needed to be converted to Islam. Uh, similar to the, uh, the arguments that uh, uh, Christian crusaders made you know, by declaring that non-Christians were infidels and needed uh, to be converted. Now, according to Smith, Islam also determined the ways states were created. The rulers of this period claimed to be descended from a Yemenite ancestor, the 7th century figure Saif ibn Di Yazan of Himya. Now, also, since around the 15th century, the head of the empire, known as the Mai, took the title of Caliph. And under the Seifawa dynasty, the throne was believed to be the cradle of Islam. As such, the Mais um, who ruled uh, relied on Islamic advisors and their power was expected to be guided by the prescriptions of the Sharia, the set of Islamic law known as the Sharia. One of the reasons that scholars suggest for the fabrication of a Muslim religious ancestry, which some trans-Saharan um, African rulers started claiming, you know, was a way of aligning themselves with Arabia, not only through religion, but also through kinship. Now, according to some historians, the merging of Kanem Bornu gave birth to the ethnic uh, group that we now know as Kanuri. And the Kanuri language the, became the lingua franca 
of the empire. The, the empire evolved into a major diplomatic power in the Sahara with significant links with the Muslim world. Um, so due to its location also as the, at the crossroads between Northern Africa and uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, it benefited from trade um, contacts with different parts of Africa. At its height, Kanem Bornu covered some of present-day Chad and went as far as modern southern Libya, um, eastern parts of uh, the Republic of Niger, northeastern uh, Nigeria, and northern Cameroon. The empire's um, conquest of Tripoli in 1551 gave it access to Ottomans, who it hired as mercenaries because um, they had firearms um, that it needed to use to keep conquering its, uh, its neighbors. The alliance uh, helped its conquest um, of other territories south and west of Borno. The empire also relied on its uh, 10,000 strong cavalry and highly skilled horsemen for conquest and their slave raids. Kanem Bonu picked during the reign of Idris Aluma, who ruled between 1571 and uh, 1603. Idris Aluma was a military tactician and diplomat, and he had strong diplomatic ties with a lot of um, other major powers of the day like Egypt, Tripoli, and the Ottoman Empire. His major adversaries were the Tuareg, Hausa, Tubu, and the Bulala. Some of these groups kept fighting back to resist conquests. Um, even though some of them were already uh, Muslims, they resisted, uh, kept resisting uh, uh, conquests by, um, uh, by Idris Aluma uh, uh, and uh, the Kanem Bonu Empire. The empire then started losing hold of some of uh, its territories in the desert and on the eastern side of Lake Chad to Tuaregs and uh, Tubus from, from the north during the 18th century. The major threat to Kanem Bonu came in 1808 when Usman Danfodiu led a Fulani Jihad with the intention of conquering and integrating Bornu into the Sokoto Caliphate. Resistance to this attack was led by Mohammed El Kanemi, who successfully defended the empire and won a military, diplomatic, and religious battle against Usman Danfodio. Um, so Usman Danfodio, like I said, a Fulani, was descended um, and was um, has been described, you know, as um, a mystic philosopher and revolutionary reformer. Being a Muslim, El Kanemi did not see any reason why a jihad should have been waged against his empire, since the citizens were already um, ardently practicing Islam. El Kanemi subsequently took the title of Shehu of Borno. The, the Kanem Borno Empire also continued to make progress towards becoming a center of Islamic um, culture. The rulers built mosques and undertook uh, pilgrimages to, to Mecca. And Islam continued to play an important political role in the empire and like i said earlier it was used as an excuse for the empire's expansionist practices uh, expansionist po policies the rulers of the empire used islam to justify the conquests of their neighboring uh, of their neighbors by claiming they were doing so uh, in order to convert them uh, um, to islam now there was no attempt to separate religion from the state because the rulers depended on Islamic advisors and on the Sharia laws for legal um, issues. 
in addition to tributes collected from states which were under it and the continued tracing uh, trading horses for which the empire was well known it also expanded the trade in salt salt from the empire was sold throughout the central sudan where it was used in the textile industry and for medicinal and um, uh, um, culinary uh, purposes other products like um, cotton natron cola nuts ivory ostrich feathers and hides were uh, exported from the empire now unfortunately um, another source of income for this empire was slave trade while in theory muslims could not enslave other muslims the empire of kanem bonu undertook military expeditions during which it raided and captured its neighbors captives were then sold and transported through caravans across the sahara to north africa which was now predominantly under the moors other captured people were transported and sold to countries in the Middle East. Slave trade generated profits for, for the rulers of this empire and helped them hold on to power. The, the, the regular trans-Saharan um, trade in slaves, which supplied human beings through markets in the Lake Chad region to end users in North uh, Africa and the Middle East, seems to have been established only after the rise of Islam in the sub-region. It is believed that about two-thirds of the slaves exported northward from Kanem Bonu were women and young girls destined to meet the domestic and sexual demands of North African Moors and Middle Eastern households. The dynasty which El Kanemi founded in Bonu uh, was attacked by a Sudanese warlord in 1893. This brought an end to the independence of the empire. In, by the 19th century, what was left of the empire was divided between the British as part of the uh, Nigerian colony, while Germany took the arrest as part of their colony of Cameroon. Uh, of course, Germany lost the hold uh, um, of what's, what they initially had when Borono became reunified under the British in Nigeria after the First World War. Thanks for watching. Uh, please continue to send us your comments and questions. Um, send them to our community page and don't forget to share our videos. See you next time.